Okay, so we're just going to have a look at uh, the equipment that I use for photo stacking. The main thing is you need uh, what's called a, a sliding focus rail, and you can see that. You can see that here. So that is your sliding focus rail. And there's loads of different types, all different prices. Basically, all it allows you to do is to move the camera forward or backwards using the rotating knobs on there and that's really important because when you focus stacking basically your lens you don't focus with the lens you, your lens is focused at the nearest point and then you use this rail to move the camera forward and each time you move forward you take a shot and the movement is very very slight so when you when you actually turn the knob it's just a very very slight twist you're just moving it probably a millimeter in most cases and then taking another shot, moving a millimetre forward, another shot, and so on. So it's just minute, you're not turning it a whole turn of the dial, it's just very, very slight each time you take a shot. So the main things you need, that's the first thing, and I say they are all different prices. That one is quite an expensive one, but you don't really need that as long as it's sturdy and you've got a good drive on the, on the knobs there that's nice and firm. Anything basically will do the job. Another thing that you need attached to the camera is one of these. So a cable release, and again, any cheap cable release will do. All it does is allow you to take a photo without getting any shake on the camera. So when I press the button, it'll take a shot. Really needed that because just pressing the button on the camera will move the camera and you're trying to eliminate any movement and you can see also I've got this this designed just put that there I've designed this table so rather than use a tripod because I found that when I used the tripod things was moving if I put my feet by the tripod the tripod would move and because the subject is separate from the tripod obviously you're getting a lot of shake and I couldn't get good results so a much better resort is basically this is just a piece of wood and you can see that I've attached with a with a nut that you can get so you just need a nut that will fit that thread I've just drilled a hole through there and I've got various holes going along there so I can move the camera to any position that I want basically you need to be able to get underneath this so it needs to be raised if you've got it on a table you need to put something under it so it's raised so you can get to the nut to tighten it obviously or to move it uh, what else have we got? I've put a little rail on there and I've bought these LED lights which with a switch I can turn them on and off and uh, adjust the lighting and that's, that's really good to have an LED light because an LED light gives basically the same type of light that natural light gives and I have to get these really close so you can see they've got clips so I can put them anywhere I can put them on the table so the one on that side there is clamped to the table you can also use something like this so you can just basically get a, a battery operated LED and position those if you've got something to put it on close to the subject and when I'm working these lamps will be right really close to the subject there to, to light it up because when you're working this close it's very very hard to see the subject and you see also, also got a little device and again you could use anything you could use a you know anything to stand the subject on but I bought this clamp and it's really cheap I bought these on Amazon and they're actually a, a flash head clamp that again bolts to anything and you can adjust it in any direction and that's really nice I forget the price now but around 12 15 pounds something like that and I bought a number of those they're really useful for lots of different things and the subject is held in place and basically I don't know if you can see that but I've got a damsel fly on there you can see that but on there is a tiny little damselfly and yes the subject does have to be dead 
unfortunately, but I'll get loads of these in the garden. So I don't have to kill them myself, I'll get loads uh, I'll find in the garden. It really is a haven for these. So that is the subject. And you can see the tiny little head on there, which is whew, probably just about two millimeter across the head. And that will actually fill the entire frame of the, of the picture when you take the shot. So these are the setups. So basically you need the slider, you need uh, a remote to take a remote shutter device to take the picture and you need something to hold the subject you need some lights and these are about 19 pound I think these lamps so I'm not expensive and you can use like I say you can use the torch which are even cheaper you know all you need to do is to get it close to light up the subject and something to hold to hold it in place as for the lens, this is quite a quite an unusual lens. This one, it's a, a two times macro, so I can get really close up using that. And you can also see I'm using extension tubes. Now these are the main things that you'll need: extension tubes. They're not that expensive, uh, and for this lens, I don't really need anything fancy. All they do is take the lens further away. There's actually no glass or anything in them. I'll actually show you one. I've got one here. So you can see, you can see straight through. There's no, no glass or anything in there. They just move the lens further away from the body of the camera. And by doing that, it allows you to focus closer to the subject. Now you could use any lens. Uh, prime lenses are the best. So. Uh, something like a, a 50 mil prime is great. Anything in that type of region, 40 mil. This lens is actually a 65 mil. You could use a 100 mil macro lens and put uh, extension tubes on it to get even closer. But the focus stacking really isn't to get you close. What it's to do is to give you a better depth of field. When you're working close to a subject, the depth of field is microscopic. Now, when, when I'm working, when I'm feeling that damsel fly, the whole frame just, just with its head, you can imagine how close you're working and the depth of field is something like a millimetre. So everything else is out of focus. The hardest part actually is lining that up with the lens because you've only got a millimetre of focus. It's very hard to see where it is so that takes a little while to, to get it in the correct position. But what focus stack allows you to do, it takes a different shot and each time you move forward and take another shot, it moves forward towards the subject, the whole lens, the whole camera. And by doing that, you then use software to merge all those shots together so you've got everything perfectly in focus that you want in focus, basically. You haven't got it, you wouldn't do the entire uh, insect from top to bottom if you're shooting it from the front, but all of the head and, and part of the body will be in focus pin sharp focus and that's that's why you use stacking not to get closer some people think oh, you know you only need stacking for that but you can use it actually for landscapes you could get something close to you in focus like a say a dog that was sitting by your feet uh, so you got a close to the subject and then you could have the mountains say in a background on a shot and you want everything in focus and you can do that exactly the same process by doing that, but in that case you wouldn't use a sliding rod, you would just focus the lens to those positions and use the software to, to get the end shot. 